Hello there and welcome back to one more episode of the Yellow Turbans Abridged. Last time we were auto-resolving our way to success in the south of China, and in the north we had to actually fight against the Duchy of Zhong, but we were able to defeat them, and both they and the Kingdom of Wu eventually became our vassals, so now we pretty much control the country, but we just technically don't, so we've got some business to finish off here. There are various enemies all over the place, including the Kingdom of Song, who is one of our main enemies, and they are actually attacking us somewhat hopefully in the north. Most of our armies are still in the south of the country and we're already at war up north. The one stack I have here is now facing off against a main army from the Kingdom of Song, and our army isn't very good, but we are encamped here, so that gives us a gigantic advantage that's just not shown on the balance bar. The enemy are attacking in two groups, this group, which has the two full units of archers, unfortunately is able to use fire arrows, or at least one of the two units is. We see some fire arrows coming in and starting to take down our towers, which is absolutely the right thing to do. They can remove our advantage if they do that. But what appears to be the case is that the other unit can't use fire arrows, and it goes and stands on top of the one that can. So the fire arrows just kind of stop coming, and the group just stands there because they were waiting for the fire arrows to take effect. I guess the AI is switched off until the towers are gone. So that means nothing happens with that group. Meanwhile, the other group isn't bothering with archers. They're going to charge on in. So here we are with them just fighting in front of our towers and the other group standing there. The archers are sometimes attacking us, but it's mainly the unit that has non-fire arrows shooting. So this is fine. This is actually going easier than it's supposed to be going because of some kind of glitch there. Eventually the group that is making an attack will die because it can't get past those towers. No way. That's the end of them. And we can start repositioning our men ready to defend the other front. Because that group that's holding off will eventually attack us. Just because the towers killed off the archer units. And that switched the enemy's melee focus back on and they started charging at us. They did actually get enough fire arrows off to set fire to the wall in front of the tower and that little piece of wall then spread the flames both onto the tower and onto the wall beside it so a large part of the fort wall will disappear and open up more avenues for the enemy to attack us, that's quite nice. But as you can see they lost most of their infantry just walking towards us because we had so many arrows flying out at them and those that do make it inside now have to face my whole army, the extended line that is easily enough to defend the bits of the wall that have fallen. Don't really have any advantage from being in the fort anymore, but we don't need one. We've just got advantage on the balance bar. We'll beat those units down over time. Here's the enemy general. Down he goes right towards the end. And that's going to bring this battle to an end. I thought, by the way, that that was the faction leader. It certainly looks like the faction leader, the guy we just annihilated right there. But it's actually not him. And interestingly, the guy who replaces him also looks just like the faction leader, but isn't him. It seems the Kingdom of Song have a limitless supply of these clones, which is highly suspicious. They've got tons of the same guy. So we haven't killed the faction leader. That's a shame. Now, we are going to have to deal with the fact we're at war with this faction from the east coast by Shining. And they have armies all over the place. One of them is down near Poyang, which happens to be newly vassalized. It's part of the Kingdom of Wu. So they can help us out with this Pyrrhic Victory Auto Resolve. And we are going to be doing a fair few Pyrrhic Victory Auto Resolves from now on because having our troops alive doesn't really matter. Here's an example we're fighting the clone of the Kingdom of Song faction leader again, so we'll just take that Pyrrhic victory. This will be one of those cases where the Pyrrhic victory isn't all that good actually, because we are right on the front line and we can't see anything beyond that fog of war. So it's pretty risky, at least we take the settlement for free there because we just killed the garrison in the auto resolve. And here's what I mean, this random army from Liu Cho, who I think is the descendant of Liu Bei's faction and still has like one region up in the top right somewhere, they suddenly appear from the mountains. This was trouble, so I decided to try the offer surrender button. We haven't tried that one before. Wasn't quite sure what it was going to do, but what it appears to do is it does delete your army, but the officer leading it is still alive, and their retinue of troops will just respawn when you re-recruit them as well. So while you do lose the men, you uh, don't lose the experience on the units because you can just respawn them later on. This Bai Xu Ning is causing some trouble with two stacks who themselves are ready to go on an auto-resolve spree through our territory somewhere in the middle. 
but I have men on the way to deal with them. Up north, this Liu Cho comes over to attack two new stacks of trash I've just created in the area. We just run away, and now he's stuck, and soon we'll be able to out-trash him with a massive swarm of trash. First though, let's retake that place that Bai Xuning just took from us. The two armies that were here have moved actually apart from each other. One went west, the other east, so now another gathering cloud of trash will be able to just storm through the region. Liu Cho says goodbye once we form up our men to attack him, and that's going to be another faction leader dispatch from the Liu clan, which is now rapidly becoming the something else clan, I suppose, and we'll prepare to make our attacks there. Now we have an annoying diplomacy thing. The Duchy of Zhong has ended up in a war with Huang Shi, and that means we also are now at war with Huang Shi as the vassal master. Have to break some peace treaties for that, but it doesn't really matter at this stage. At least this means we can clear out our territory because Huang Shi has all of these little enclaves in our territory so we can make the map more nicely painted by taking them down. Also the Han Empire is at war with us. I think that's because the Kingdom of Song is actually their vassal master so they recently joined the war as well. So we're going to be taking everyone out at this stage. We're going to really start cleaning up and I'm just recruiting armies with single officers and then using the mercenary guys, guys to fill out trash stacks and just go around auto-resolving everything. So here's some rapid-fire auto-resolves, stealing some Han Empire territory somewhere in the middle of the map. I think this is Lu Jiang commandery or something. Down it goes with no kerfuffle. The Kingdom of Song come at us with another army intercepting my advance of trash. But we've got them severely outnumbered, so down they go and that's the end of them. Note in particular, the officer that surrendered is, I think, among them, now fully respawned, replenished, etc. So surrendering seems to be a pretty good deal if you can get it. You can just immediately counterattack with the same army again at your leisure. Now let's auto-resolve some more guys. Some of Bai Xu Ning's men get taken down. Here's me auto-resolving that farm just near where we killed the Kingdom of Song guys. Here's me encountering one of the old faction leaders from the beginning of the game. Jin Jiang was her name, I think, the bandit leader who was just hanging around down here in uh, Lu Jiang commandery. And down she goes. So that's probably all of the official faction leaders dead at this stage in the campaign, not quite sure. Here's me taking some random town from the Han Empire down in the southern mountains near the south coast. We're going to continue along that coast to take some more territory and get a better painted map. And here's the Huangshu area we need to take down in our back lines, actually near where we began the campaign. We'll uh, form up to attack them. We've also got some Huangshu territory in Changsha, which is a bit of the old Kingdom of Wu. And Zheng Kai is leading the attack there with some more trash, so we just overwhelm them. Then jumping back to where we just were with Huangshu, that place in the west gets auto-resolved to death as well, leaving them with just one more territory down the road, that old iron mine I sacrificed earlier. In the north, it's time for us to get serious about attacking the Kingdom of Song. We've got four stacks here and more on the way, so we just start auto-resolving our way in. There goes the city of Hernay, and we also take down the survivors from the old Liu Bei army. And now we're good to go, moving on to besiege the city of Dong, just up the river. I think by this point you might have got the idea and are convinced that I can just keep auto-resolving to justice, I've got like an hour and a half more footage of me auto-resolving battles, so uh, maybe we'll skip over that and just get to the interesting parts right at the very end. Delegate more times, come on, it's time for some delegation. Delegate more times, come on, it's devastation. Delegate daughters, come on with automation. Mm -hmm. We can't call the nation. Delegate daughters, come on. Order resolving so many battles, etc. Oh, it's not even nearly there. Not even nearly. Gonna have to speed the footage up. I delegated a lot of battles. Here's a particularly important order resolve. We took the seat of the Kingdom of Song, so their emperor is now gone and Zheng Kai is double emperor or something, so just one more empire seat to get. However, at about this point, the Kingdom of Wu actually declared independence, so that's a huge swathe of territory now 
hostile to us, that means even more auto resolves. There's an automatic way to my heart. There's a way to skip right there from the start. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you play the game. The result in the end will be the same. So you might as well auto resolve. <laughs> <coughs> yep. One more time, it's time to delegate, yeah. Oh, yeah, all right, I'll stop advancing. Oh, one more time, we gotta delegate, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the guys are dancing. And one more time, we gotta delegate again. Why do I keep delegating? And one more time, we've got to delegate. I've got so much work to drop me delegating. <sighs> Good video, though. Now, many auto resolves later. There is what appears to be just a standard auto-resolve, but this time things are a bit more interesting. Well, this part isn't. Here's me destroying the army that was guarding the capital of the third of the three kingdoms. So they got absolutely annihilated, got ambushed by four stacks, they go down. But then, after the camera randomly jumps away somewhere else, it jumps back. And check this out, we got ambushed. They somehow turned this around. And suddenly, these guys, the Kingdom of Heishan, are ambushing me. That means my four stacks can't work together, and their one stack happens to be better than my trash here, so we're forced to lose a battle. I guess this officer has some kind of trait that allows them to make offensive battles always, always an ambush for them. So that sucks for us, and we do lose one of our stacks, but... The enemy army walks off somewhere, and it doesn't come back before our remaining three stacks go in order to resolve the Imperial capital. So with that, we now control all of the three kingdoms, and that means we finally win the game. We have done it. Three achievements as well. A cutscene appears explaining that we are no longer going to be ruled over by the aspirations of man or something like that. But unironically, also Jankai is the emperor now because he aspires to be it or something. Something, 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 the world is saved in some unspecified way, and the yellow turbans reign supreme. So that's that, we win the campaign. And afterwards we can check out this little time-lapse thing, where you can watch our territory, the black stuff in the west, spread over China like a huge disease, and gradually eat it up. So there we go, we have conquered the land, the yellow turbans reign supreme in an awkward sort of way where the non-yellow turbans are also our vassals and we've also kind of replicated the old government within our own organisation so it's actually all just exactly the same in some way. I don't know, I don't really know. Apparently Jiang Kai is my favourite character, I'm not sure how the game decided that because we didn't have him for all that long. I guess maybe I did so many auto resolves with him that he was considered good or something, but I think Gong Du was a far better guy. And shout outs as the game does say briefly there to Shu He, the leader of our second army and our premier trash stack that did quite a lot of work throughout the campaign. Here are various stats going down the left. Nothing too interesting, although I did note it said something like total number of wars zero, which was a little bit of a confusing stat to get out of all that. I think it might mean that's how many wars you were in as the game ended, and technically all the other factions got destroyed or something, so it's always going to be zero? Not quite sure. Also there it says payments made zero and payments received tons. We were certainly gold digging China. We did not give any ground when it came to making payments. You know, I'm pretty sure that's wrong. I'm pretty sure we did make a whole load of payments throughout the campaign. I don't know what's up with these stats, but anyway, there they are. Take them for what they're worth. We have here the uh, stats on units lost and units killed. We didn't lose that many units because auto resolving preserves units. So it looks like we killed way more enemies than we lost on our own side, killing two and a half thousand enemy units. That's not just troops, that's squads of troops, sets of troops. Once I scroll down a bit, you'll see it actually does show in this game 
the overall numbers as well, unlike previous games. And that's much more balanced. We did lose absolutely loads of men just auto-resolving all those Pyrrhic victories. They just didn't count as unit losses. So it was still pretty good. We killed way more than we lost overall, but you would expect that with us being the winning side. It was a very bloody revolution indeed in the end. So really, that is that. Thank you very much for watching the Gongdu campaign, the mostly Gongdu campaign, as the Yellow Turbans in Three Kingdoms Total War. Hopefully you enjoyed the fact that you didn't have to see all of it, especially at the end there, as we just skipped through a couple of hours of the game at the end very fast. Also, one last note, these two guys on the end screen, I don't like them one bit. I guess the second guy is okay. The first guy has like five feet of chin sticking off his face. It just looks like something weird's going on there. Anyway, so our new mutant inbred empire will be taking over China. And that's the end of that, as it is the end of this series. So thank you very much for watching. I've actually already got planned the next series I'm going to do. It's along a similar theme. I'm going to go back to playing Oriental Empires to play the DLC. Oriental Empires is the Chinese-themed civilization-like game, which I played recently on this channel. And there's a DLC which is the same thing, but you play as the Mongols. And not really sure what it is, but I think it's different in some way. And I did say I would play it at some point. So we'll go back and it'll probably be quite a short abridged series if it's anything like the last time I played Oriental Empires. And after that, well, I don't really know. So do feel free to launch suggestions at me in the comments. I might even do an actual poll a bit closer to the time because there's so many different things I can do. I doubt there'll be much agreement just in the comments in general for what it should be. But yes, do let me know. And playing another campaign in Three Kingdoms Total War does also remain an option, by the way, if you did particularly enjoy this one, perhaps with some mods or something. So that really is it from me. Thank you very much. Glory to the yellow heaven. I'll see you next time.